Hello, this is Chris Duncan here at Find Your Focus Photographic Education, and I'm going to show you a few things in Corel Painter today. This is an image that a friend of mine and a fellow FYF attendee for the past two years, Sherry Braden, took in our uh, recent workshop. These are not models, these are just people she ran into, and she let me borrow this image. It's a great image, so I can show you a few things in Corel Painter, how I like to paint images. Originally, I was going to do a landscape, but I think this is probably more practical to everybody's applications to do a portrait. So before I open in Painter, I'm in Photoshop, I want to do a few things. You can do this in Lightroom as well. I just didn't have this image imported to Lightroom. That's the reason I'm choosing to do it out of Photoshop. So I'm going to use Beveza. It's a NIC software plugin. I'm going to open it in Beveza. I like to do a couple things. I usually brighten the image just a little bit because when I go in Painter and start mulling, moving pixels around, it can get mushy and dark and muddy really fast. I like to brighten it. I like to add a little bit of contrast as well. Um, and structure or use your clarity slider in Lightroom, I like to bring the structure up. Once again, when we start moving pixels around in Painter, this will still give it a nice painterly look, but I don't mull and, and mush up the pixels too much in Painter uh, where it starts looking flat and muddy. And then I like to open my shadows. Obviously, you can do all of this in uh, Lightroom as well with those sliders. Now, there's a few things I could probably stay and do here, but I'm not going to for the sake of time. I'm going to click OK. It's going to give me a new layer with that Viveza adjustments that I just did. So you can see the before right here and the after. Just want to brighten it, add contrast, open the shadows, and then do some structure. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. And I will save it in my painter folder. And I'll just leave it what it is. I'm going to save it there. So now when I go to Corel Painter, I can go ahead and open this image. It's in my painter folder right there. It's called SB whatever it is. Okay, once it comes into painter, there's a few things we need to do. First of all is we're going to clone it because we're not going to actually paint on raw canvas. We're going to paint with the pixels that are already there. So I'm going to go to file, quick, or not quick clone, but clone. I'm sorry, quick clone, sorry. It's going to give me a new image. It's going to shut down the other one. And you can see I have this low opacity. That's my tracing paper. If I turn that off, I've got a blank canvas. Turn it back on. That's what I'm going to be painting. And I like to set this opacity usually um, pretty low. And then I can toggle with Command T between my tracing paper and my image and see where I am. Okay. First thing I want to do is get a nice brush because I need to make sure every pixel is painted. So I have this brush called Initial Clone. Um, it's just an oil brush over here on the right hand side with my color palette. I want to make sure that it's uh, grayed out. If it's grayed out, I'll turn off this tracing paper. If it's grayed out, I paint the pixels. If it has a color, I'm going to paint whatever color it is. See, so I want to make sure it's grayed out. That way I'm painting the pixels. And I can be a little loosey-goosey with this and just kind of, I'm going to minimize that and just kind of go over here and just make sure all the pixels have some paint on them. And that's what I'm going to do. This usually takes just a few minutes. For the sake of time, I'm going to stop this recording. I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole thing and we'll meet you on the other side and we'll take our next step. Okay, here we are. We have finished uh, our initial clone. Every pixel has paint on it. One thing I want to show you before we go a step further is I'm using this initial clone brush, which is just an oil cloner. Um, my reset up at the very top of this bar, my resaturation is at 100%. And what resaturation is, is basically how much paint is on the brush. So if I move that resaturation all the way down to yellow or to zero, I'm really not painting the complete pixels. I'm just grabbing part of it, right? You see that? By moving my resaturation up higher, I can get more detail. And with the clone and using that reference image, I don't have to work in layers. I can just paint over it and paint over it. If I accidentally turn on a color and paint here, I don't have to worry about that. I'll just go back over it with my clone brush. And obviously, the, the faster I move, the more it smears it, and I can move slower for nice detail. This is just this works with all the brushes, but with this initial clone, I just want to make sure all my 
all my pixels are touched because it starts looking really fake if you have some pixels that aren't touched. Okay, next thing when you're working with an image like this or any image has all these elements is you want to start painting from the background to the foreground. So that means I'm going to put a red, a yellow brush here just so you can see. So I'm going to have to paint this area, then this area, then this area. Then I'll need to paint this area. I'll have to scroll down here and paint this and all of this right here. I have to paint all of these areas. Then I can start working on my people. You see, I'll be able to start working on them. And when I paint them, I want to do their skin and then the scarf. So foreground and background. Then I can come and finish with my foreground elements. So I always work from the back to the front. So that's how I'm going to have to work this image out. So let's just uh, Command Z, undo all those. Probably out of undo stroke, so that's okay. I'll just put on my clone, cloner again, and just go over it again. That gives you an idea of where we're going to paint, though. So let me just get rid of these. I'm going to leave a few of them so you kind of know where we're going to go. We're going to work on this top area first here, this background. And there's tons of different brushes you can use. It depends on your style, how you want it to look. Do you want it to look photorealistic? Do you want it to look real paintery? Uh, I'm just kind of giving you what I like. Um, and I have this underpaint, Chunky, which is a really nice brush. Um, make sure you're in clone mode again. It's going to clone the pixels. So there's our image. Here's the paint. And I just kind of do little bow tie, figure eights. Lifted up my pen. I'm using a Wacom tablet. Lifting up my pen. And since this is soft and out of focus, I just want to hit those colors and do nice little um, small short strokes. And I'm gonna have to do this for all of this background stuff. So it can be it can be pretty labor intensive, um, but it's a fun process. It's you know one thing I really like about this is you can see it start to take shape immediately, um, and that's really fun for me. It's kind of like when, you know, if you ever worked in a dark room, you would dodge and you would burn and you would, then you'd have to wait and sit it in the chemicals and see if you did it right. And if not, go back to the drawing board. It's one thing I love about the advent of digital photography is we can see our results immediately and know if we're on the right track or if we need to start over. And so the painter program really does that. Now I like to, you now you kind of make your, make it up as you go is kind of just what, what look do you want it to have? What colors do you want it to bring forth? And I'm not going to get real detailed in how we can add more colors and add depth to this. Um, just kind of showing my technique. Big thing is work from the background to the foreground. Um, I love the highlights in images, so I'm going to try to keep those highlights. So if I see a highlight, I'm going to start there, and I'm going to pull the highlight into the shadow and not pull the shadow into the highlight. It just keeps the highlight better. See how I'm going around this front one? Because I'm going to have to hit that one later because it's in a foreground image. But I need to get all that back stuff behind it. And if I get into his hat a little bit, I'm not worried about that because I'm going to be able to come back and do that again. I can a bracket key, make my brush a little smaller on these smaller details. Doing the same thing, just small little figure eights, small little jumps here with this brush. And this is the style I like, this real impressionistic, a Monet style of painting. Um, I must admit I'm not real versed in lots of other styles. This is what's worked for us and our clients seem to love it. Um, and so that's kind of what we do. I want the focus to be on the subjects. So I want this background to really get nice and soft and painterly. Um, and I love this color palette. Sherry did such a great job finding a location that went with their clothes and the lighting and um, just really did a superb job on this image. So I'm glad she was allowed me to paint this for her. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to continue painting this background, foreground. I'm going to paint foreground to back, uh, background to foreground. And we'll come back on the other side and have a little bit more of it done. And then we'll talk about something else. P remove my tracing paper, show you the image, and there's the painted one.
Okay, and now let's go in and let's kind of work on them a little bit. One thing I will do a lot though, before we get to that, I apologize, is when I'm painting this background, like I said, I want to hit the highlights. And so I'm going to hit my Command T a lot and use this brush because I want to get my highlights so I know where I know where I can pull those out. And then I can go back and see and hit Command T again and see how that's altering. So I want to hit all these nice little highlights and that bright green. And it just gives me a reference to where I need to paint. So I'm doing this a lot. I've made a hot key on my Wacom tablet, which is Command T. Um, so I can just sit here with my finger on my tablet and hit that and use the other hand with my brush and really get to work really nice and fast. So and then I use the space bar. I even made a hot key for my space bar um, too, um, which is it's right under my hot key for my um, under the, sorry, right under the hot key for my transform or my command T, so I can easily move around and look. So anyway, just some quick little tips there for you. Okay, let's get to them. You can see I kind of went into their their clothing a little bit. That's okay because I'm going to easily be able to take that back out. Easily be able to move that back out. So what I want to do is still work in foreground to background, background to foreground. I'm sorry. So I'm kind of going to hit his scarf and then his face and then his hat. Um, I've got another brush. And these are some brushes I got from a friend of mine, Greg Daniel, who does paintings. And a lot of this I learned from Greg and some other stuff I've learned from Heather the Painter. You can find her at heatherthepainter.com or Greg Daniel at gregorydaniel.com. It's Daniel without an S, Gregory Daniel. So, Greg, if you get a chance to learn from either one of them, you'll be blessed. Um, so, I'm just going to use my command T's, make sure I don't go out. Now, just, this is kind of like the underpaint chunky brush. It's just designed for clothing, little different settings. But I just want to hit his clothing. And the thing when you get to this part is you really need to pay careful attention to the way the folds are in the clothes and um, the direction you brush. Because that's really where our shape and form comes in. See how this is folded right here? So I wanna I wanna follow that fold. I don't wanna just go, I don't wanna just go straight down. See how there's no let me show you this. Let me get a color brush. Um, this will be red just so you can see it. If I go like this, there's no shape. But if I can start doing this, then I can start creating some shape. Does that make sense? So that's what I really want to try to do is follow that contour of the clothing that way. And this is where that Command-T hotkey comes in. So I can really see make sure I'm getting all those nice areas see I'm not I'm not just going straight lines I'm following the contours of the clothing so, so I'm building that shape and dimension uh, in my portrait obviously this is this is in behind that collar so I've got to paint it first I want to go background to foreground the whole way through it's not just for the foliage it's for the whole image if you're a painter paint on a raw canvas you wouldn't start with your subject, you would start with your background, and that's where that comes from. Now I can go back and hit this collar, and it looks it looks seamless. It looks like I painted it in that way, the way it should look. If you get if you get out of place on that, your image will really start looking kind of fake. So now so you gotta be careful where you start. So I probably should be hitting his face here. Gotta get his skin underneath there. So let me just get a little more of his clothing. So he's behind her, so I need to get that first, and so on. So the, the background's really, really pretty easy. Once again, hitting those highlights. Um, background's pretty easy because you know it's foliage or it's a house or whatever. Um, but when you start getting to your main subject, you got to really kind of pay attention to where you are, and you go back and forth from different areas. So... Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea. I'll be doing that the whole way through, and I'm not going to make you watch it all. Uh, I'll pause it here in a minute and uh, keep going and then come back. You'll join us on the other side. But before I do, let's go and work on his face a little bit. Here I have a brush 
It's called Skin Brush. It's just an oil, just an oil cloner. My opacity's low. My uh, my reset's down to 15%. If you want more detail in your skin, re bring your reset up a little bit. And same thing. We gotta follow the contours of the face. And if I go if I make really fast strokes, I'm gonna smear it. I make really subtle strokes, it's going to be more detailed. So around his eyes, I'm going to move a lot slower. I want the detail there, but on these, on these other things, I'm going to move a little faster. And I'm bringing the highlight into the shadow. I'm starting with my highlight. See, I'm on the cheek working outward. I'm not bringing that shadow side in because I want that, want that nice full face, nice full highlights. If you do too much and you don't, and your resets off or, or anything, and you move it too much, you can really change the shape of their face, and that's not what we want to do. That's why it's really important that we go with the direction and the contours of their face. So their chin, is nice little ovals. So very, it takes it takes some time. It's, I still feel like I'm improving every time I do one. A nice subtle soft strokes. You'll, you'll notice I'm bringing my highlight into my shadow, not the other way around. If you pull your shadow into your highlight, you get really muddy looking highlights. And we want nice, clean highlights. It's really nice for a portrait. I'm going to turn that on and off. So you can see how we have a nice painterly look, but it's still got some nice detail in it. So we can tell it's a face and what this cowboy looks like. I'm going to go over here and do, let me get this little area here. I'm often adjusting the size of my brush as I go. Um, just, to, just to make it easier for me. Let's kind of hit her face um, real fast and then we'll pause it. And I'm going to work some more on their clothing and we'll catch up on the other side. But really slow around the eyes. See how I'm getting those first because those are in the background. Nice and slow. If you want more detail in your eyes, bring that resaturation up. And then work, you're going to get more detail in your eyes. So that's what I did. I brought that reset up to about um, 70 and make a nice soft stroke. And I'm going to hit the lips, get a little more detail in the lips. Okay, I'm going to bring that down to about 25 to 30 is kind of my happy place. And just work in those highlights, following the contours of the face. The nose, I'm going to start on the tip of the nose and go up the bridge. See how I can bring that highlight into her nose. Nice. The cheek. If you have a problem kind of figuring out the shape of the face, just kind of make little circles. That's going to be better than straight lines for sure until you kind of get a hang of the structure of the face. Really careful around the hair. don't want to pull that hair in, the color of the hair into her. So not, you can see nice, soft little strokes there. Clean that up around the chin. I'm going to go a little slower, get more detail. I'm going to bring my reset back up to around 70. And I'm going to go nice and soft around these lips and these teeth. Bring in that detail there. Let me finish up with her... Uh, her bust here, her, this little skin showing. I don't think we have much more skin showing, so that's apologize. This may not be the best image to show you skin, but it kind of gives you an idea of the basic techniques we use when we paint an image for a client. And these have been really nice for us, a nice addition to our studio. Zoom out a little bit, bring that. Now we can do Command T on and off. So before. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and finish painting up their clothing. And we will, oh, the hand here will be the same thing. Nice and smooth, still following the shape of the hand. I think you get the idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and finish up their clothing and get that all painted. And then we'll meet you on the other side for some finishing touches. Okay, we're back, and I finished painting the clothing. I'll just scroll through here. You can see 
Um, we're going to talk about this area down here where stuff comes in front of it in just a minute. So I've got the clothing all nice and painted going background to foreground. So I had to jump around a little bit. And I'm going to just show you a way to clean up a few things, especially around their hat here. I did the same thing. So I'd turn off that layer. I'd go from the highlight to the shadow to keep the shape of their hats. One thing with this is we may want a little more detail in some of this. So I have a cloner, a smooth cloner brush. It's an oil brush. Um, I reset. I'm going to bring it up to about 35 or 40. And I'm going to turn off this layer so I can see. And I just kind of want to trace this edge. And see, I can kind of bring out some of that detail. And just trace those edges nice and soft. That band, nice and soft. Trace that highlight right on that edge. That way I can kind of clean up that. And then, the, then it starts kind of looking a little bit fake, and I'll show you how we bring that out. But now I'm just nice and smooth. I'm getting a little more detail in that hat, which he'll probably like because those things are expensive. Maybe in his scarf, too. Hit a little bit of those areas in his scarf. Same with her hat. Right on this edge highlight, I want to hit that nice highlight right there. I got a nice line there. Same over here. And then in that fold back there where it hits the background, I want to create a little separation there and along her face. It comes in front. So you can see how just that little cloner brush does a nice job cleaning up those edges around those details. Another place this might come in handy would be if you wanted to show the buttons um, on, their, on their coat. You know, I can pull in that button. These little loops that have some texture. Um, I'm not going to show a zipper. I don't think that has any, but just, and then this little edge where her hand goes in her pocket, I'm going to bring that out just so you can see a little bit more of that shape there. Really light touches. Keep in mind, these are very light touches. Just brings out a little bit more of that detail. Um, maybe around his collar there where his hand hits. So, and around the boot. If I wanted to bring that out around the boot where it hits this rock. So, can do that really nice. Um, that's with a with just a round clone or smooth. Um, adjust your reset, adjust those things, and they'll you know get different looks really for your style what you want to do. Now, just a variation on that brush is a hairbrush. It's really the same brush, just a feature. Um, your feature is how far the the bristles are spread apart. Um, so you could use that same brush and raise the feature. Is I'm going to put the color on this so you can see what I'm talking about when I talk about the feature. See how they're spread apart? And if I bring the feature really close, it's clumpy. So that's what I'm talking about. I have that feature up pretty high for this hair. Oops, don't want it colored. I'm just going to follow the contours of her hair again. Going back and forth. And what's nice about this is you can pull it, just pull it into that background. It nice makes a nice bleed. It's really realistic. It's nice and painterly. Want to make the brush smaller for these smaller details. You can see, I'm, I turn my tracing paper off so I can see how her hair flows. And then when I turn it back on, you'll see we have a nice painterly looking hair. I don't need really to hit anything with his. I used his with that other cloner brush, which is really the same, just less feature. Um, one thing I like to do sometimes with hair um, is I'll go back into Photoshop and put a liquify on it, <laughs> and you can really make it wavy if you want. Same thing, I'm going to hit these highlights and pull these highlights up. So now I've got a really nice look in her hair. Okay. I could do the same on her fur coat if we wanted to, if you're painting animals, anything like that. So I'm going to use my space bar to go around. Now this is where we got to get, we have a lot of things coming in front here. We said we want to paint background to foreground. So I'm going to start up here on this brush and bring that in. And I'm going to go back to my chunky brush that I did the other foliage with, make it a little smaller. Keep on, I got to keep doing this and just pull it gently into her. I don't want to pull, a, I want to pull into the jacket. I don't want to brush from the jacket out or I'll pull that blue 
um, from her jacket into that plant, and then it'll start looking weird. You've got to give the appearance that this is in front of her because it is. So just these quick little these little techniques like this. Then when I get over here, I can do be a little more loosey goosey with my figure eight motions and stuff just to make it look like bunches of of leaves. But when I get close to her, I need to really be careful how I pull it in. There's color. Maybe you can accentuate that color. Turn in your tracing paper on and off. Accentuate that color. Space bar down. Now here, just see where those are. I just want to hit those. Boop. Nice, quick, short little. I'm pulling it into her color, not the other way around. So it appears that it's on top of her. And that's what we need. If you go the other way, you get weird looking shapes. You always want to pull the, the foliage, whatever's in foreground, pull it up into the background. Now I can make my brush bigger and just kind of be a little more loosey-goosey on this stuff. Little figure eight motions. It's going everywhere. Try to pull those highlights into the shadows. So I don't have those dark holes there. So you kind of get the idea. See, I'm dragging, I'm not even, I know my, my brush is going to do what I want it to do when I drag these brushes this way. So I'm just following them along with that layer turned, with the tracing paper turned off so I can see what pixels I want to hit. I turn them on, it looks just like I thought it would. And here, let's see how this one is in front of that, so I'm going to pull that over into this. Just like that. Same with the rock. Come over the rock. And there's different brushes you can use if you're wanting a, a different look. But this is just the look that I really like. This brush is easy to use. Um, it gives it a nice painterly look. You can be a little less precise with it than with some other brushes. So it gives you a nice kind of medium ground to get some a painterly look until you learn um, how you need to do some of this and what style you like and how you want your images to look. So I think I've got a little more up here. Let's see, did we get it all? Do Command Zero to pull out. So now I just need to finish up these things here. I'll do that really fast, zooming in. Make sure you have a Wacom tablet or some type of tablet. If you're trying to do this with the, the mouse, it's like painting with a rock. Really hard to do. You need that control, that pressure activated control. And you want to make sure you hit all the pixels. That's why that initial clone is so important so we don't have any unpainted pixels. So in case I happen to miss something, it's not as blaring at me um, as an unpainted pixel. Like I said, there's other brushes you can do to get this to do this if you want more detail on these leaves. I like the subject to go, the eye to go straight to my subject. So when I get to this, I get really loosey goosey, and that's why I really like this brush. I can really make a nice impressionistic um, oil looking painting. And then your clients are really confused that it's a painting and not a photograph. If there's any doubt, I think you're probably not painting enough, in my opinion. If there's any doubt that people go, is that a painting or is that a photograph? You might want to look on a little more unrealistic look. On the rock, same thing. Try to hit those highlights. Get a little shape to the rocks. Let's see. I might have missed a little spot there. Anywhere else? I think we're looking pretty good. Now we're just going to finish this out. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. And I've been saving it as we go. I always recommend that. Now I'm going to save it as a PSD. Um, Sherry 2. We'll name this Sherry 2 since it's her work. Okay, it's telling me my... If I save it as a PSD, my clone source is gone. So if I open it up, I want to open that image source again. I don't think I'll be doing that. Now I'm going to go back to Photoshop and open and finish this out and... really the way I like to finish them out. Okay, so 
So there's our painted image. Here is our unpainted image. Very nice. So a couple things I want to do is play up these highlights and shadows. And what I do on this is I will create a new layer that's blank. I fill it. I set it to soft light mode. And then I'm going to fill it with 18% gray or 50% gray. Now if I put this on normal mode, you'll see that it's gray. Soft light will look like it's not there. And then I get my brush and I want black or white. So I hit the D to the default to my black and white. Bring this brush is really small. And I'm going to go in and paint in my highlight and shadow. A white brush will paint in my highlight. A black brush will paint in shadow. So I'm, I'm black now. So it's kind of like dodging and burning. Just dodging and burning. Just going to hit these dark parts. It's hard to see right now. Um, but it really makes a nice difference on these images. I just want to hit a few of these just to give you an idea of what we're doing. I'm going to hit around the eyes, hit the pupils, burn in those pupils a little bit, those eyes. These shadows of the face, these cheek lines underneath the chin, around the ear. Put some low lights in her hair. Oop, that's a little too heavy. Just nice, soft touches. You could do this in a painter. Um, I like doing this method because then I, I just feel like I have a little more control. And that could be that I'm just not um, good enough in painter yet to do it. But um, this is the, this is a technique that's worked well for me and that I like. I do this a lot of images. Um, hit that rim of that hat right there. And then I'm going to pull out and get a little bigger brush and just hit a few of these shadow areas um, in the foliage. And when I turn this layer on and off, you'll be amazed at the subtleness. You really, it's hard to see you laying it down, but when we turn it on or off, you'll be really impressed with the depth it adds to this image. So I just hit some little dark parts. Make, you know, and you just make little C's and S's and U's and just try not to keep straight, just don't try not to do straight lines. Try to follow the contours of what's there. Of course, I can't turn on my tracing paper anymore. That's gone since we're in Photoshop. But I'm able to just kind of highlight some of these areas, still space barring around. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this layer on and off. You can see some shadows come in, a little bit of depth. Really nice look. Now I'm going to hit X to go to a white brush. I do the same with highlights. Anywhere I want a little highlight, I just paint it in. Really nice along the edge of their clothes to accentuate that backlight, that nice lighting that Sherry put on this, on their hat, here on this rim. Good thing is I just hit X again if I want to go back to a shadow brush. I'm going to do a nice soft one here, put a little light on their cheeks, under their chin because they get a little mushy sometimes. And we paint it together. Smaller brush for her hair. Following those highlights again. Girls love highlights. They want to have good looking hair, trust me. It gives them nice looking hair. You can even whiten the teeth with this if you need to. And then if you want, you can go ahead and hit, hit some of the highlights in the landscape, the rocks or the, um, or the trees. Some of these leaves. I hit just a few of them, just just to save some time with this demo. This was, I'll probably go back afterwards and do this a little bit more. Um, so Sherry has a nice finished piece to give her clients. But let's turn that off and on. Can you see that subtlety? Nice, subtle. Gives a little bit of depth. Okay, we're almost done with this. One more thing I'm going to do. Now I'm going to go to Color Effects 4. It's another Nick plugin. Load this image. I'm going to do a couple things that give it a little more painterly look, I believe. One is I like to do a tonal contrast. Nicking, it's Nick by Google. That's a little too hard, so don't, don't freak out. I'm going to bring my highlights down on the right-hand side, my mid-tones. I like my shadow contrast a little higher. 
and I think that's way too saturated, so I'll bring that down and set it to a fine. So it's nice and subtle. Just bring, see how it brings out the depth when I bring that shadow up. I really like that look. And then I want your eye to go right to them, so I'm going to do my favorite thing. It's called the dark and light and center. It's kind of like a vignette, but I can place the center where I want it. Bring that center brightness. I could bring it way up or way down. And I can bring that outer brightness down. Center that up again. Oops, a little too low. There we go. And then I'm going to control point just a hair, about half and half off of their lower, so that there's so it seems like they're still in the light a little bit. So turn that one off and on. You can see how we really directed our viewer's eye to this beautiful couple. There's before, and there's after. So I'm going to click OK. It's going to apply that. I will save it. And we could put a border on this if we want, set it on a nice canvas. But it's ready to send off to, to our client, put on our wall. And it's just a quick little way, um, kind of my painting technique. The key is, don't forget the Viveza step before or Lightroom. Increase your brightness. Open up your shadows. Add a little clarity or structure. Don't do sharpness. Add clarity or structure. Sharpness is different. So if you're in Lightroom, do clarity. If you're working on Photoshop, do Viveza and add some structure. Or Topaz or another filter they will give you that look. Then go into Painter, paint from Paint It All, Initial Paint It, then Background to Foreground. Make sure you follow the contours of the clothes and the face. Um, then I bring it back into Photoshop and do these quick finishing touches. So I hope this has been a good help to you. Um, it's been fun to paint with you. We did this all in probably a little less than an hour. Uh, your video is going to be shorter than that. Um, I probably spent an hour total of hour time on this. And I think we got a nice look that our competition is not going to have and it can set us apart. And it's really fun to do. Um, it's been a nice creative outlet for me and I enjoy painting. So once again, this is Chris Duncan with Find Your Focus. Thanks for watching and happy creating.